Well, it really sucks because basically we are not allowed to go into Bosnia. Although the paperwork that we have says that we have the authority to drive this car. And uh, the rental car company said it's absolutely impossible to give you guys the originals. So we don't know what to do because we are about to enter countries like Serbia and Macedonia and other countries that have these type of strict rules. So we don't know if we're going to get stopped at every country. We don't even know where we're going to go. Um, so we're a little bit at a standstill here trying to figure out what to do. What's our plan? Do we just wait another couple hours and try to cross over again? I don't know. They're pretty strict. Okay, so what we've decided to do, it's now seven o'clock. We're trying to go through a different border into Bosnia to get there tonight. So hopefully, fingers crossed, they're gonna let us in and if not, I think I'm gonna tell off the border people because it's not very nice. We have everything saying we're allowed to be in their country with this car. Let's see what happens. Well guys, after begging and pleading with them at a different border, we are now in Bosnia. So, so far, all we've seen is gas station after gas station after gas station. Yep. We haven't seen any of the other stores yet, but they have a lot of gas stations in this country and it's starting to look hilly, but other than that, we don't see much because it's so dark. See, there's more gas stations. This is basically what we're seeing. One after the other after the other. Edges. Yeah, like look at what we're driving. Here? Oh no, puddles. This is crazy. This is crazy. Driving through a tunnel in Bosnia. Oh my goodness. I guess they haven't. Uh, um, Fix the le leaking issue. <laughs> Are we out? I so. Yeah, I see any. Th there is a light at the end of the tunnel. But it's just more construction now. Yay. The past was like an hour. Girls, look at this tunnel compared to the last tunnel. After a very long drive to get here up a mountain, we couldn't see much, but we're going to show it all to you tomorrow in beautiful daylight. And um, from what I see anyway, we're really in the nature, so I think it's going to be really nice. Oh, well, we had a super restful night here at this hotel. It's called Level Up. I'm going to show you all around. The girls are down here on a different level than we are, but um, let's see if they're ready to go for breakfast. We're not sure where breakfast is. We're trying to figure this out. I think it might be over here. Oh wow, look at the view. You can see the city of Sarajevo down below. So uh, the guy just came. He brought us, first of all, the most delicious coffee. It and seems juice. very strong. Freshly squeezed juice, but uh, he's like, okay, what would you like for breakfast? So we've got omelets, which is like, yeah, traditional, yeah. So, and then he's like, or soup. And Chloe's like, I'm gonna have soup. That'll warm me up. And it's, uh, we are like, well, what kind of soup? What do you say, Angelique? Beef and vegetables. Beef and vegetables. It looks like they have tons of really cool things to do here in the city mm -hmm. and then in all the surrounding areas. So basically what it reminds us of, it reminds us a bit of Medellin because it's like this big long city and then it's surrounded by the mountains on the sides, all these beautiful rolling hills. And they have all these different ski resorts, they have mountain coasters, you can do off-road um, ATVing, um, they have rafting down the rivers. Um, basically a whole bunch of things. They have a cable car that goes up and down. And basically what I think, I might be wrong, but a lot of this was built up for the Olympics. So we're gonna go discover it, show you as much as we can uh, in a short amount of time. It's gonna be really fun. Sorry for the really dirty windshield. <laughs> I 
think I found something really cool. So this whole area basically is all like this. It's really big, right? But right there behind me, you could see a fire coming out of it. I'm not sure if you can see. I think that's for the Olympics. I'm not sure. Fire. Fire. Girls, come over here. It's very much in the nature. It's beautiful. Yeah. So this is what we found here. Looks to be an old ancient, what do you think it is, Chloe? Castle. Looks like a castle, right? Like where they would shoot. Or fort, maybe it's yeah. a fort. So the fort that's here uh, has all the names of a lot of the people who were murdered, uh, but this fortress was bought, built, I believe in the 1100s, and then used as a prison. And uh, so anyway, it's basically a huge monumental area. Uh, to remember those who died. So those look to be young kids that were smoking and a lot of different spots where we were when we crossed the border I had to go into an office they were using Google Translate last night to tell me you can't come into the country blah 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 um, and they're all smoking in their office so in government offices they smoke um, I think this is just the norm here so very different compared to a lot of the countries that we've seen so this would be like Europe back maybe 25 years ago that's what Europe used to be like well not in government offices I don't think they smoke but you would see people smoking on trains 25 years ago you'd see people smoking in restaurants uh, whereas in you know in America and Canada it was very much uh, taboo to smoke inside buildings for many, many years. Right, so I think that fire flame right there in a the distance is not for the Olympics. It's probably more so a memorial for those who died. But please, if you're watching the video and you know, just comment below and let us know so that we are not misinforming everyone. Here we go, so you can see all the names of the people and the year they died. So you see a lot of 1942, 1940. Well, a lot of them, 1942, basically. So yeah, it's a huge memorial spot. And you've got walls and walls like this all the way up. So I met a really nice man named Mirza. And he lived here when the whole city of Sarajevo was under siege. He was about seven years old. And he explained to me what it was like, where the, the Serbs were at all the different towers if you will around the city on the mountains they weren't letting any food go in or out I mean it was really hard and it was the longest sieged city in modern day history so you can imagine four years not being able to get coffee electricity gas like your normal things of life this is what they lived lived through it's unbelievable so this monument here is for all the women during the war who basically fought and it's a monument for them to remember those women. So let's go discover the old town. Okay, Chloe, you lead the way. I don't know where I'm going. Oh well. First stop is to go get water and apparently it's really good drinking water here. So you don't have to buy it if you yeah. don't want to? There's a legend here that if you drink the water from their fountain that you will come back again to Sarajevo. So we're going to go drink it and we'll see if we come back. This is what their tram looks like here. Look at the Sarajevo. So we just found out something really interesting. The people that came, that were Jews, came from Spain, interestingly enough, because they were kicked out of Spain. Um, so they came here. Mm -hmm. And they actually call this town the little Jerusalem. Jerusalem? Jerusalem. Yeah, because it has Jeru multiple it has religions. multiple religions all in one. So we're going to show you all the different church buildings. So Catholic, Christian, mm -hmm. Muslim, Jerusalem. and Jewish. Jewish. Basically, the, the Christians that are here are the Orthodox Christians. They have the same thing in Prague. We are going to fill up our, fill up our water bottle, just in case this is the water that makes you come back to Sarajevo.
Drink it and see if you have the urge to suddenly come back to Sarajevo. I do. You do? <laughs> I do. Yeah, really close. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Those. Yeah. Started from the mud, now you see us going up. Numbers never lie, now you see us blowing up. People used to front, now you see them showing up. So what's up? I've been down and now below. So we just found this little place. We're gonna go have some lunch. And it's called August Brown Brasserie, so let's go check it out. Watch the, all we watch is the first two ones. Dinner or lunch, I guess it's a late lunch. It's a leopard. It's like a mixture of things, so it looks really cool. Let's dig in. I think we got like just different meats and basically a bit of everything. And a pizza. Because we're in Boston. I want pizza. So here's a little story about August Brown's restaurant here. So August Brown was here in the 1800s and he was from the Austrian uh, Ottoman Empire. And basically this guy built a whole palace uh, for his future wife, Maria. And now there's a whole neighborhood it's called Marien, I'm saying it probably wrong, Dvor, and it's still here. So it's crazy. And at that time, like palaces were not just common practice for homes. So anyway, interesting story. And I think that's why the restaurant is named after this guy, or maybe it was his restaurant. I don't know. Okay, so this area here is a monumental area because essentially this is the start of World War I. Let me quickly explain and put it in a nutshell for you. So hopefully I'm saying everything correct. So you see this car in a distance. This car was driving with the Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria. So this was the Austrian Empire, if you will. And him and his wife were driving in this car and these young boys in their 20s, just under 20, thought it would be a good idea to assassinate the guy. So what did they do? The one decided to launch a grenade. It kind of made uh, the car worried. The car took off. It didn't harm, harm them or hurt them. But, uh, and that one guy, he actually tried to commit suicide. It didn't work because he took a suicide pill. Long story short, it was old and so ineffective. It just made him sick. The second guy, after the car ran off, uh, a little while later, this car turned and made a wrong turn and he was trying to reverse the car and he stalled the car right at the same point where his assassinator was and he took advantage of that, shot the Duke and his wife. So that young boy, he was just shy of 20 years old, he also tried to commit suicide after he killed the Duke and his wife and uh, as well his pill was ineffective so he just made him sick. He didn't get a life sentence, or I mean he didn't get a death sentence because he was under 20 but he got uh, life imprisonment or at least 20 years died four years later of tuberculosis but get this because of what he did the Austrian Empire thought well let's go against Bosnia and attack Bosnia so for one guy or two guys mistake let's like just make the whole nation pay makes sense right yeah okay so then what happened after that is the Germans were allies to the Austrians and because Bosnia was part of the Slavs Basically, the Russians said, well, we're going to help you guys. And the Germans said, well, we're going to help the Austrians. And then France, they had ties to Russia, so they were going to help the Russians. And essentially, 
that created World War I. Isn't that wild? And that also escalated into World War II. So crazy stuff, all right here. So our mom's zip lining first and then our turn's next so we're super excited. So here in Bosnia, they often do this where you have the food in the center and then everybody shares the same plate. And it's really good. Lots of meat, lots of french fries, potatoes, really yummy. their Swiss chocolate fix because they're eating ranch chocolates with bread. They ordered chocolate crepes <laughs> and, they have a hot and a hot chocolate. Mm. Is it Nutella? Mm -hmm. No? This here is basically the bobsled for the Olympics that was uh, here and we're gonna go show you I think where the actual trail was. Plus I have a good map to show you a little bit of the whole area, so let's go see that. The old town where they have all the little streets must try coffee there. And there they have the cable car that comes all the way to here, which is exactly basically where we are at. So the main road you can take from here, or it takes about 25 minutes to drive it into the, the city. But if you take a cable car, I believe it's only about eight minutes. We're about to go show you that right now. And where we're staying is literally walking distance. So here, and then you can hike all these beautiful trails. So they have a really nice trail, hike uh, number one, trail number one, has different um, signs and everything so you won't get lost. And uh, it's just beautiful. So this is where they were bobsledding for the Olympics yeah, yeah. back in 1984, you guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those. 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 Yeah. Started from the mud, now you see us going up. Numbers never lie, now you see us blowing up. People used to front, now you see them showing up. So what's up? I've been down and now below. Keep it a buck, I don't. Always been one up on all of these. They be trying to front for all of these. I ain't got time cause they all in their feelings. I to the gang and we making a killing. It's 2020 and they notice the vision. You be the hero, I'm playing the villain. The underdogs and we walk in the building. We getting money, yeah, they think that we dealing. They talking hot, yeah, they up in Stop till we all touch a million, don't ever forget, but we probably forgive them. I'm living, taking the cards that was given, my blessings is already written. Wrap little ribbon, putting ourselves in positions to making some major decisions. I Started from the mud, now you see us going up. Numbers never lie, now you see us blowing up. People used to front, now you see them showing up. So what's up? So this mountain, if you were to go all the way up to the top, it's called uh, Trebevnik. And it's only about 1,600 meters high, still pretty high. And uh, the Olympics took place in a place called Jaharina, which is really close by to Sarajevo behind us. So behind me is the city hall. It's really pretty.
Okay, girls, what are we on the hunt for right now? Ice Turkish cream. coffee and ice cream. Here we are in the old town <laughs> and we got something called, yeah. it's called Sebap Chichi, but they say they shorten it for Sebap. Okay, the chicken salad. Let me tell you a little bit about the pricing. So what we just got, which is right there, is about four bucks. And um, just so you guys know the pricing. Coca-Cola is about two dollars. So here you could basically buy all different types of souvenirs. A lot of the copper is all made by hand. They make this beautiful little Turkish coffee. So this here is a famous, famous water fountain where you can go and drink from. All right, let's go drink from the water fountain. Ice cream time. <laughs> I was just saying it's a nice day difference from Switzerland because when ice cream in Switzerland is four francs, all of our ice creams, five ice creams and a cappuccino, we paid five francs. It's not crazy. Seriously. Look what we just found. These are all ruins from, I'm not sure exactly what, but obviously from a long time ago. It's beautiful, huh, Julie? oil like lavender relaxation one the two of these together guys was 10 us dollars so i mean in most countries this would be about 50 us right it's crazy and they're all handmade and just really nice so I'm so excited so what i need because i'm starting to get wrinkles ah. here we are we're going back up the telecabin back to the resort where we're staying at and the girls are super excited because we're about to go do archery and some horseback riding. Yeah. It reminds us of Medellin, Colombia, because of the way the whole city is shaped how it goes on all the way like that in a distance and then there's the mountains on both sides. And then how the whole, basically up the mountain, you have all the homes like that. Mm -hmm. And how, in, in Medellin as well, I think we went up to some green area too. Yeah, we did the same thing and it's on the left hand side of the city as well. Really? Yeah. Except for Medellin would be about Can I? five times the size of this or bigger. Here we go, Chloe's gonna ride this beautiful horse. Oh, look at how beautiful it is. That's a little different. You know how to ride English style? Yes. Okay, see you later. So. See you at the bottom of the mountain. Ciao, have fun. <laughs> so here at Level Up, this is the hotel there in front of us and they have all these activities. So as you can see, Angelique's doing a little horse ride. The guys in a the distance, they're practicing shooting archery. There's zip lines and parkours for the kids. Oh, there's an arch. See you later, Angelique. See you down the mountain. 
These guys look scary with their guns. Your hold is to do a So Angelique, when she was younger, always wanted a gun. So this is really funny. She's getting what she wanted. She had a big one. We'll play this. We'll play this. Whoa, you hit it! You hit it! Wow! Okay, so let me explain what happened. Tyler was here yesterday and he came by this travel agency and this travel agency is basically promoting trips to Andalusia, Spain. And as you can see, they've got Granada and Cordoba. And what's crazy about this is these two pictures are our YouTube thumbnails. So they found this on YouTube or on, on uh, Google and used our pictures for their promotional materials. Isn't that crazy? So right now we're at their market and it's really nice. It's like an indoor market. So what's crazy is everyone, even in like a market like that, even though it's closed in, everywhere you go, all the people working inside are smoking. It's really crazy.